Hey there, I'm Ray, and this is The Kitchen. What groceries do you always keep in the kitchen for meals and snacks? Let's think about your kitchen for a moment. What's in your pantry, if you have one? What do you keep in your cupboards? What's in your fridge and what's in your freezer? Now, can you make legitimate meals out of the items you have? Let's head into my kitchen, see what I keep stocked up on, and we'll talk about what sort of meals and snacks we can make. Now, I asked what legitimate meals you can make because, let's be honest, we've all probably had those times where we've cooked up some noodles, plopped some butter in there, sprinkled some salt on top, and called that dinner. And I'm not judging. Just the other night, for example, I didn't have any real food ready to eat in my fridge, so I took a tortilla, tore it into little strips, put little slices of cheddar cheese on them, put that in the microwave until the cheese melted, and then I squeezed little dollops of pizza sauce on top of each cheesy tortilla bite and called it good. Now, I'll be honest, it was tasty, but not the healthiest thing to be eating every night. And eating a variety of foods helps ensure that our bodies get a variety of nutrients. So, I myself don't have a pantry, but I have one cupboard that I call it like my pantry cupboard, and that's where I keep like my canned and some of my dry goods in there. Canned goods, let's start there. Beans, uh, black beans, kidney beans, chili beans, garbanzo beans. That, those are the beans that I normally keep. I don't always have canned garbanzo beans, but I'll usually keep dried ones on hand. But we'll come back to dried goods. So then canned vegetables, I tend to keep canned corn, maybe canned green beans, definitely canned tomatoes, usually a diced tomato. If you have a can of like petite diced tomatoes, you can use, if any recipe calls for canned tomatoes, a lot of them call for diced, or you could just substitute diced in for whatever kind of tomato they're asking you to use. Then there's canned tuna. And right now I don't eat a lot of tuna, but tuna, if you like it, it's really relatively inexpensive and you can use it for sandwiches. Well, we'll get into what we can use it for. Um, but if you like tuna, canned tuna is a great thing to have on hand. And then I'll keep a few cans of canned fruit on hand, usually like peaches or pineapple. Now, fresh peaches and fresh pineapple are delicious, but sometimes I don't live where peaches and pineapple naturally grow, so I'm not used to like fresh, ripe, right off the tree peaches and pineapple. So usually canned fruit is picked at the peak of ripeness and then it's preserved in the can. And so usually the canned fruit just take tastes perfect when whenever you want a little sweet treat. And for, if you're looking for a little bit of a healthier option, I always get the canned fruit in 100% fruit juice. So you're not adding any extra sugars from a light or a heavy syrup. So my opinion, I would suggest just going with 100% fruit juice when you buy canned fruit. But don't let me tell you how to live your life. Lastly, for canned goods, I like to keep maybe a can of corned beef hash in my pantry cupboard. Now, I know some people don't like corned beef hash, but to me, it's like a little treat for a weekend breakfast. You get it all crispy in a frying pan and then you eat it with some dippy eggs and maybe a piece of toast and I just think it's delicious. 
and it is relatively salty, but I've found that a lot of times you can find a low sodium option at the grocery store. So let's move on, move on to the dry goods that I'll keep in my pantry cupboard. Again, beans. Um, even if you don't use beans frequently, they're a great thing to just keep on hand. They're dry, they have a long shelf life, they're easy to reconstitute. You soak them in water overnight or there's usually a quick, quick soak option where you boil them for a little while and then let them soak. Um, I usually have garbanzo beans at the very least and sometimes, I know it's not a bean per se, per se but green peas or lentils. Some people don't like peas, so when I think of dry peas, they're usually split peas, and I think of split pea and ham soup, and I like that. I've never made it for myself, but I know some people don't like that, so I'm just giving you an option. But lentils are an excellent option. There's some yummy dishes that you can make where the lentils are the show of, or the star of the show, but lentils can also be used to bulk up like ground meat. So lentils, you may or may not like them, but sometimes they're good to keep on hand. And like I said, we'll talk later about something that you can use them in. So not necessarily what you would consider dry goods, but dry ingredients that I keep in ha on hand is bullion usually chicken bullion. Sometimes I'll keep beef bullion, but almost always um, dry chicken bullion. So instead of keeping around cans of stock or boxes of stock or broth, which take up more room, I usually keep the powder. And it's up to you. If you prefer the canned broth or the box of broth or stock, go with that. It's awesome. Again, we'll talk about what we use it for, but stock or broth. Store-bought is good. If you make homemade, awesome. Of course, you'd be keeping that in your fridge or your freezer if you had homemade, unless you, you do canning and you preserve your own, but good to keep on hand. Some bullion or some broth. Spices. Now, almost everyone's going to have salt and pepper Garlic powder and onion powder, if you don't have them, are excellent staples. They're very basic, but they bring a lot of flavor to the party. Other ones include like seasoned salt, uh, dried herbs, such as like basil, thyme, rosemary, what else? Chili powder, cumin, uh, cayenne and crushed red pepper flakes if you like a little bit of spice in some of your food sometimes. Hmm, what else? I have a bunch of spices in my spice drawer. Paprika can be good. Plain paprika for sure. If you want to get real fancy, you can get smoked paprika. Of course, fresh herbs are always going to give such a more potent and fresh flavor to your dish, but if you're not going to be using them like right away, it's good to have a dried version on hand that you can just pull out whenever you need it. So then let's go to like flour and cornstarch. So it's a thickening agent. So like when you're making sauces, having flour and or cornstarch on hand can come in handy and possibly cornmeal but we'll get into that and depending on what you like to make what you might like to make you may or may not need cornmeal i don't use it often but some recipes do call for it and then sugars you may not think of sugars a lot for cooking but if you're making homemade sauces, um, homemade pasta sauces, the sugar can like cut the acidity of a pasta sauce or like a brown sugar is somewhat common for like Asian sauces or marinades. So white sugar and brown sugar 
good to keep on hand. You'll probably use it for other things like your coffee or something like that. And then let's go to my other pantry-ish cupboard <laughs> where I keep some more uh, dried goods. I always have rice on hand. I always go for a brown rice, so brown long grain rice, brown basmati rice, if I can find brown jasmine rice. I like to switch it up. Minute, minute rice is good too. Like if you're someone who just wants to get the cooking over with, minute rice, or also known as instant rice, is a great option. There are some different types you can get. I'm used to the brown minute rice. It takes longer than a minute to make, but it's like 10 or 15 minutes versus 40 to 50 minutes. So keep that in mind if you do rice. Most like basmati rice and jasmine rice and white rices don't take quite as long as brown rices. So just look at the packaging if you're not sure what rice you want to get. If you want it to go quickly, go for the instant or the quick rice. Then pasta, I always have pasta. I usually have two different kinds of pasta. I usually have a short pasta like the corkscrew shape or penne. Those two are commonly found in the whole grain, in a whole grain variety. Um, but recently I found some bow ties in whole grain or whole wheat variety and I thought that was fun because I think the bow tie shape is really fun. Um, and then I always keep on hand a long pasta, usually spaghetti or linguine, again in whole wheat. Um, and then if you, I don't always keep it on hand, but if you are a lasagna person, lasagna noodles. Again, I always get dried pasta, and so a long shelf life, it's easy to keep on hand, it doesn't take up a ton of space, but it's there when you need it. And then oats, I eat a ton of oatmeal, and people think, oh, oatmeal, you just put it in hot oatmeal, but I've, I have a couple different things I like to use it in, and there are a couple things that you might use it in and um, aside from hot oatmeal. So oats are cheap. You can get instant oats or old fashioned oats. I am partial to old fashioned oats, but again, like with the rice, old fashioned oats don't quite take 40 minutes to make or like brown rice does, but old fashioned oats do take a little longer to make than quick oats. Steel cut oats are also an option. So it kind of is a texture thing, like what texture do you like and how much time do you have? Steel cut oats do take a longer time, more comparable to rice. And then I always have raisins on hand. Again, it's, I believe it's probably the cheapest of the dried fruits. And so I put raisins in a lot of my oatmeal. So it's a nice thing to have on hand, a dried fruit. So let's go to fruit. I like to keep a couple fresh fruit on hand. I typically go for ones that are on sale when I go to the grocery store. Um, and then I try to keep one frozen fruit on hand, whether it be like raspberries or blueberries. Um, and then vegetables. I always keep frozen vegetables in my freezer. I like frozen produce because it's picked when it's ripe. If you're not getting your produce straight from like a local farmer's market, a lot of times pr your produce is being picked before it's at its peak ripeness and then it's artificially ripened on its way to the store. So when you're getting frozen produce or even canned produce, it's picked right when it's ripe and then it's preserved through canning or freezing. So frozen vegetables are a great option. They're relatively cheap. Um, I always keep 
usually frozen peas, frozen corn, and one other like either frozen carrots or frozen spinach or broccoli on hand because it lasts longer than fresh and it's there when I need it and it's super easy to just warm up and add to a dish that you're making. And then as for fresh veg that I keep, oftentimes I'll have carrots. Right now I'm not on a carrot kick. I'm more on a spinach and cucumber kick. So cucumbers, like English cucumbers where I'm at are usually like 99 cents for an English cucumber, which I think is pretty reasonable. And then for the past few months, I've been just keeping a leafy green on hand, whether it be spinach, um, if you like iceberg, there's no shame in iceberg. I feel like several years ago, everyone's like, iceberg is not a good, not a good lettuce. You should be doing romaine or kale or something darker green, leafy green. But iceberg has its place. It's crunchy and it does have vitamins in it. So it's still okay to have. So iceberg is okay. Like I had iceberg or spring mix, spinach. Again, you don't have to have lettuce though. I'm, I've just been on a kick the past few months, but before that, I like the meatier vegetables. So I like to keep a, two or three on hand. So right now I have baby spinach, an English cucumber, some carrots, and I'll kind of rotate. Like if you're someone who wants to eat seasonally, like whatever is in season, like pick a couple and keep those in your fridge. Kind of vegetables also, I always have onions and garlic on hand. Onions and garlic go in so many dishes and if you keep them in a cooler, not in a cooler, but in a cool dry place, in your kitchen or in your house, like some people keep them in their basement. They last a pretty long time and they bring so much flavor to your dishes. So whether you have, I usually have a white or a yellow onion, but often I also have a red onion too. And then I'll buy a bulb of garlic. But there's no shame if you don't want to deal with smashing the cloves and chopping them up and stuff. You can always get the jarred garlic and keep that in your fridge. That's okay. If you're not big on onions, like I know some, they hurt some people's bellies. Uh, you could try using shallots or green onions. They have a more mild flavor and you'll have to let me know. Maybe they won't hurt your belly as much. Just a thought, if someone knows, let me know. You can connect with me on my social medias, which I'll leave down below in the show notes. So let's head back into my fridge. I know we had, I keep most of my fresh produce in there. Not all of it. We'll talk about that. Like my cucumber and my lettuce and what else do I have in there right now? Carrots, those go in the fridge. I don't keep any of my fruit in the fridge except grapes sometimes, but only if those are on sale and usually only if they're 99 cents a pound because I love me some grapes but they're pretty pricey compared to some other of the fruits. So in the fridge, I always keep eggs on hand, always milk, usually cow's milk and oat milk lately, but whatever milk you have, because milk, if you don't drink it, if you don't eat cereal with it, if you don't add it to like your oatmeal, your coffee, milk can be used for sauces, so I know I use milk, so it's a staple in my kitchen, in my fridge. And then butter. I always have butter. Real butter, plant-based butter. Butter lasts quite a long time in your fridge, so it's pretty easy to keep on hand even if you're not using it on a regular basis. And cheese. I always have cheese. Cheddar is a staple in my fridge. I always have cheddar in my cheese drawer if I don't we better get to the store and pick some up. But uh, whatever cheese you like, I just grew up with cheddar. It's what I 
prefer most of the time, but if you like mozzarella, if you like Munster, some of the more mild cheeses, if uh, you want to keep on hand some Parmesan, Parmesan is always great to have on hand for pasta dishes. Uh, feta, feta is great for cold salads or I mean, whatever you want to put it on, but cheese. Cheese makes just about anything better. And staying in the fridge, what about our condiments? I always have a dressing or two in the fridge. So I typically always have ranch, even though I don't eat ranch very often at all. Lately, I've also been keeping this homemade cilantro dressing in my fridge. I know some people don't like cilantro, but I, I enjoy myself cilantro. And I found this recipe and it is wonderful. If you head on over to my YouTube channel, Recipes with Ray, there's a video of me making it. It's not my own recipe, but I link, I link the owner of the recipe in the description of that video. But it is delicious. If you like cilantro, head on over to my YouTube channel, check out that recipe. You will not regret it. So a couple dressings. A couple dips. I really enjoy hummus. So I almost, lately I've had hummus in the fridge at almost all times. Salsa is good to keep on hand, maybe just a jar, unless you don't like salsa, but it's good in like Mexican dishes or just chips and salsa. Mayo, unless you're not a mayo person. Mayo or Miracle Whip have a lot of uses and they last a long time in your fridge after you've opened them. So even if you just have a little jar, a red sauce. Now, if your red sauce isn't open, it can stay in your cupboard or your pantry, but it's always a nice thing to keep on hand for a quick, like Italian meal. Then if we go up to our freezer, I don't eat a ton of meat right now on a consistent basis, but I always keep frozen chicken and ground meat in my freezer. It's nice to grab when it's on sale, pick up a few packages and stick them right in the freezer when you get home. And then they last quite a long time. And then you just take them out, thaw them out, cook them up however you want to. But it's always good. To, it's nice to have an option in the freezer. And then the same with ground meat, whether you like ground beef, ground turkey, meat alternatives, wild game like venison or ground meat is such a versatile medium. Is that the correct term? Form of meat? It's, a cut. it's not a cut of meat. You know what I mean? Ground meat, you can make so many things with. So a couple ground meats, or if you're a big fish person, keep some frozen fish in there. The freezer, God bless it. It allows us to have those options for us and it's not gonna spoil. All right, finally, some unrefrigerated, unfrozen things. Bread, tortillas, potatoes, more grains, so many uses. They last quite a long time. Bread, if it's just you in the house and you don't go through a loaf of bread really fast, stick your bread in the fridge or in the freezer. Then it won't mold on you. But bread, tortillas, potatoes. We'll get to what wonderful things we can make with them. And then some last condiments that I, actually I do keep one of them in the fridge. I like to keep a jam on hand, jam or jelly, peanut butter, I use peanut butter almost daily. If you don't like peanut butter and you do like nut butters, there are other options. And then oil and vinegar. Such versatile condiments last such a long time. I usually always have olive oil, a light olive oil and an extra virgin, which extra virgin is more rich in flavor and you tend to use it for homemade dressings and marinades or if you drizzle it over a salad. 
and then light olive oil is good for if you're cooking with it, if you're using it in a frying pan to fry up something. Or if you're roasting something in the oven, light olive oil is good for that. And then vinegar, I have quite a few vinegars. <laughs> I mean, probably not as many vinegars as some people, but let's see, I have white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, white wine vinegar, rice wine vinegar, and then I have a dill infused vinegar, which was a gift. <laughs> you don't need all those. If you have like either white vinegar or cider vinegar, those are a good, good staples to have. And then I'll give one bonus. If you like Asian food or Asian inspired dishes, soy sauce and sesame oil are good condiments for you to have. So now that we've gone over what, I, what are my staples, I just wanna go over some ideas with you guys. So you have all these individual things, but how are you gonna put them together? A lot of these things can be mixed and matched with one another to make casseroles, to make soups or stews, to fry up some meat, like some chicken, and you roast some vegetables and you serve it with some rice. One way that I spice up my rice is I cook it in chicken broth or add chicken bouillon to the water while it's cooking. And then you get a super flavor, flavorful rice that just adds more flavor to your dish. So basically, like the basics of a meal are a carbohydrate such as bread, potatoes, tortillas, rice, pasta, oats. You add a protein, whether it be fish, such as tuna or some one of your frozen fish, uh, chicken, ground meat. If you make the meat into patties and make burgers. What else? Beans, if you're going for a little more vegetarian style, or you could do meat and beans. And then a vegetable. You can just warm up a bowl of frozen vegetables put a little butter in there if you want, stir it up so you got some nice buttery vegetables. You could roast some vegetables. You could steam some vegetables. So your veg so if you're looking at a plate, you could have your meat separate from your, your carbohydrate or your starch separate from your vegetable. Or you could make a casserole, cheesy chicken wild rice casserole. So you have your rice and you have your chicken and then you take some milk that you have in the fridge and some shredded cheddar cheese and some flour and you make a cheese sauce and you add in some salt and pepper and maybe some other seasonings and you drizzle that over your rice and your chicken. You sprinkle some extra cheese on top and you bake that and you have a casserole and you could serve that with a side salad or you could warm up some vegetables or you could roast some vegetables there's an idea for you. There's a lot of casseroles that you can make with either rice or pasta, ground meat or cooked up steak or chicken, and a vegetable. You can make a shepherd's pie. The shepherd's pie that I grew up with is seasoned ground meat with some mushrooms in there. Oh, mushrooms are another uh, produce that you could keep in your fridge if you like them. Some seasoned ground meat with some mushrooms and then a can of green beans on top. There might be two cans. I don't know. Canned green beans on top. And then we have some of our potatoes that we mashed up. Boil the potatoes, mash them up, put them on top of your ground meat and your green beans. And there you bake that and then you have a nice golden top on top of your mashed potatoes. And then you have shepherd's pie. Or a tuna salad, a cold tuna salad. You boil some of your pasta, you, you drain your tuna from the can, 
you mix it up with, I had it with Miracle Whip and some seasonings, and then you chop up your cucumber, and then you mix together your seasoned tuna with your refreshing cucumber and your drained, cooled pasta, and then you have a nice summer tuna salad. Or if you want hot tuna noodle casserole, again, you have your pasta, you have your tuna, you have some seasonings, you have some cheese, put that in your casserole dish, bake it, serve it with a side of either warmed up frozen vegetables, side salad, roasted vegetables, or fresh cut up vegetables. If you want um, homemade spaghetti, you have your canned red sauce, you have your pasta, you have your frozen ground meat. Get that out, thaw it out, brown up your ground meat, season it, um, put in there some minced garlic and some diced onions so you have a nice flavorful ground meat. You take your red sauce, we can tweak it. Your red sauce might be delicious right out of the can, but you can, you can add, warm that up in a frying pan, just get it a little bubbly, taste it. If it's acidic, you can sprinkle in a little bit of sugar. Maybe you want a little extra pepper. Maybe you want a little extra Parmesan that we have in our fridge. Grate some of that in there. Maybe you want to first saute up some onion and some garlic and you add that to your pasta sauce. So we boiled our noodles. We have our seasoned browned meat. We have our jazzed up spaghetti sauce, homemade spaghetti. And then if you wanted some rustic garlic bread, say we didn't go out and get a French loaf, but you have some sliced bread. Take some bread, put some of that butter on that we have in the fridge. You could uh, sprinkle on a little bit of garlic or garlic salt, put that in your oven for a little bit, get it all toasty or under your broiler. You have some makeshift garlic bread to go with your homemade spaghetti. If you want a little bit of Mexican cuisine, ooh, I forgot to mention taco seasoning. Taco seasoning and fajita seasoning, you can make homemade or you can buy it from the store, either in the packets or they might sell it in larger containers. Great to keep some of those packets on hand. Because if you want tacos, you have some tortillas, you have some frozen ground meat, get that out, thaw it, brown it up in your skillet, read the directions on the taco seasoning packet. So you sprinkle some taco seasoning over your prepared ground meat, add some water like they say to, let that simmer. While that's going on, you get out your tortillas, you shred some cheese, you have some salsa in your fridge. Maybe you have some sour cream because you knew you were gonna have tacos. Maybe, that's simple tacos. I mean, if you're really planning it out, you could cut up some of that onion that you have in your pantry or in your basement or wherever you keep your onions, simple. Or if you want a Mexican casserole, you can, you have your rice. Maybe we have some black beans in our pantry. We have a can of corn. We have a jar of salsa. We have cheddar cheese. Mix it all together. You can either prepare your rice beforehand or let it cook in some liquid in the oven with our beans and our corn and cheese and salsa. Bake that until the rice is done and the cheese is bubbly. There you have a little easy Mexican casserole. Back to the fajita seasoning. You can take out some of your frozen chicken, thaw it, slice it up, cook it in a skillet on your stove, add in your, if you have some bell peppers in your fridge, if you were planning on this, or if bell peppers were on sale or something, julienne those bell peppers, cut them up, cut up an onion, put that in there with your chicken, put some fajita seasoning in there. According to the directions, you'll probably have to add some water too. And then you have your tortillas, and you might have some salsa, and again, some sour cream in your fridge. Voila, there you have fajitas. If you want more beans, you could do a chili or a chili mac. So if we keep in our pantry chili beans and kidney beans, if you wanna make chili, you have your ground meat in the freezer, 
thaw that out, brown it up with some diced onion and some minced garlic. We have our canned tomatoes. You might have to have some extra like stewed tomatoes canned if you're planning to make chili, but we could get by with like a petite diced tomato. So add that to your ground meat, add in your chili beans when you're ready to serve it. Of course, ah, back to our spices, we have our cumin and our chili powder, essential. Probably some salt and pepper go in there too. But then you have your meat, your beans, your spices, your tomatoes, let your chili simmer. And then when you're ready to serve it, you can dice up some fresh onion, shred some cheddar cheese, if you have some sour cream left over, there you go. You have yourself some chili. Or some people, some people always eat chili with noodles. I don't. So I call that chili mac. If you make it into more of a casserole, it's nice and thick, it's less soupy. You cook up some of your pasta, add it to your chili. Chili mac with some cheese in there. There you go. What else can we have? Hummus. I eat hummus just with tortillas. But hummus is also a condiment like replacement. Ooh, I forgot to talk about ketchup and mustard. I always have ketchup, I always have mustard. But some people put mustard on their sandwiches, some people will put mayo on their sandwiches. If you like hummus, try putting hummus on your sandwich. Game changer. But most of the time when I'm eating hummus, I'm tearing up a tortilla and just using the tortilla as a way to get the hummus into my mouth. Peanut butter, if you eat, and jelly, if you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, if you like peanut butter and jelly and you like oatmeal, putting peanut butter and jelly or jam in your oatmeal is an awesome combination. Raisins, I also put raisins in my oatmeal. That's why raisins made it on this list. <laughs> but again, if you like oatmeal, sugar or honey, peanut butter, dried fruit, nuts, chia seeds maybe, flax seed, wheat germ, frozen fruit. I'll either use frozen fruit for my oatmeal or my smoothies. So uh, frozen fruit for my smoothies, peanut butter for my smoothies. I've started putting raw oats in my smoothies. Also, sometimes I'll put a little handful of spinach in my smoothies because you can't really taste it if you put a little bit in there and then you get a little extra of those greens and the nutrients into your body. Um, eggs, of course, eggs for breakfast. If people like breakfast for dinner, you can scramble your eggs. You can make an omelet with some of our vegetables. You can make hard boiled eggs and eat those as a, as a snack. If you like deviled eggs, make deviled eggs. If you like egg salad, you can make egg salad for egg salad sandwiches. And again, you have your mayo on hand, and I've never made egg salad, so I don't know all what else re is required to making egg salad. I said we would get back to the lentils, and I forgot to mention this when I talked about tacos. Lentils and beans tend to be cheaper per pound than meat. So if you're on a budget, or you want to bulk up your meat, or you want a little bit more nutrients and fiber in your meal, you could try adding some prepared cooked lentils in as a meat substitute with your ground meat for tacos. You could of course use them just as a replacement and add your taco seasoning, but you could also use like a half pound of ground meat with half cooked lentils and just cook it like you would season it like you would taco meat. So you're still getting that flavor and the texture from the meat but you're getting some extra fiber and more budget-friendly nutrients and bulk from the lentils. So just an idea for lentils. I keep my fresh fruit just for a snack usually and my veg also for a snack or salads or like I said on the side for your dinner. Oil and vinegar a lot of times you're gonna need oil for frying stuff up in a pan or roasting things. Again, spices for roasting things or just a lot of recipes call for some of the basic spices that I mentioned. Um, but oil and vinegar are necessary for a lot of like homemade dressings and sauces that you might make. 
So I, I gave you guys what I keep in my, in my kitchen. So I'm curious to know what you keep in your kitchen. And I definitely didn't cover everything that I've ever had in my kitchen. Like sometimes I'll try something new or something's on sale that I don't normally get. And I definitely didn't cover all of the meal options that you guys could have. Like I, <laughs> I can't even start to cover the numerous varieties of casseroles and sheet pan meals and skillet meals and combinations that you could have for dinner. And I know everyone has a little bit of a different taste they prefer different cuisines and different spices and seasonings and textures of their food. So if you are willing to share, I'd love it if you guys would DM me, head on over to, well, there's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You could go to my YouTube channel, leave a comment on one of my videos, but I'd love to hear some of your staples that you always keep in your kitchen and what you make with them or what you how you eat them so i will leave links to my social meds down in the show notes most of them are underscore recipes with ray they've all, they're all just connected to my youtube channel but don't worry it's still me i'd love to interact with you guys and maybe on a future episode, I will share what some of you guys shared with me because I, I find different foods fun. Like I think going to the grocery store is fun most of the time. It's like going on an adventure. That's all I have for you guys today. I'll leave you with this. Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He is my hope in this world. He is my purpose in this world. I'm going to leave a passage of scripture down below in the show notes for you guys to check out if you feel, feel led to do so. Thank you all for listening, and we'll talk next week.